everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I am Z Garcia. Welcome, everyone. We are really glad to be here today. Instead of our weekly top 10 list that we do, and this week we're going to be just announcing the Dice Tower Award nominations. So before we go through this, this won't be a very long video. I want to tell you that straight up. We're going to be we're going to talk about the awards briefly. Then we're just going to tell you all the nominations, and then we're done. Pretty simple. In, out. But I want to talk a little bit about what we're doing here. Uh, one of the big things that we did this year, well, minor, I guess, is we're changing the name of the awards to the 13th Annual Dice Tower Awards just because even though these are awards for the year 2019, the fact that we give it out in the year 2020 has always confused everybody. Um, so there is that. These are for games that are published in the year 2019, although there is give a few weeks on both ends because every year different games get published, and we just make those calls. We try to pick games that are uh, published in English. So, for example, The Crew is a very popular game, but didn't come out in English till last month. So that's a 2020 game, not a game from 2019. Um, what we do is we have a group of people that is made up of uh, the Dice Tower staff and people involved with the Dice Tower, as well as people who are bloggers, um, podcasters, video reviewers. They're all invited to join us. And this year, 84 people voted on the nominations. That's not including me. And we just throw out games. Everyone throws out games. We make lists of these games, and then we vote on them. And the five games that get the most votes, with the exception of Game of the Year, that's the 10 games that get the most votes, are the ones that make it on the list. Once we have this list together, and we'll be publishing it now, then the committee will work on playing those games if they haven't. Most of us have played many of the games. And then we will vote on them. And in early July, we're going to be doing a live stream event. I don't have the exact date yet. We'll have the date as time goes by. We'll do a live stream event where we uh, announce the winners. And they will get the trophy. This is the actual trophy. Um, well, this is not the, this is a actual trophy. This one doesn't have the, the winner listed on it. And, um, this is made from Panda manufacturing. So they made, these are pretty good. It's a pretty heavy thing. I think what's this like five pounds. It's a fairly heavy. Yeah. If they, we ever have a dice tower version of clue, this will be one of the possible weapons. It was Z Garcia Absolutely. with the dice tower trophy in the studio. Yes. <laughs> so there is that, um, so we're going to be doing that. Uh, I don't vote. Just so every year people are like, oh, Tom picks the thing. I do not, unless there is a tie. There was a few ties in nominations, like the bottom, like five and six. So I got to pick some of those in there. There's a few caveats that we have. If you are involved with one of the games, you can't vote in that category. So if Z was the designer of a game, he couldn't vote in that category. Um, and uh, other than that, Last couple things I want to say. We want to give a shout out. Rob Searing designed the logo for this. Um, Roy, Mike, Kenny, and Brant, and Z helped put these together. And uh, Jason and Jason helped put all the awards together and make sure everything was done and properly. And we double checked. There's still possibilities of mistakes that have been made in here. We do our best to avoid those and miss out on those. And you might say, why wasn't this game nominated? Be, because it wasn't you know i don't know what else to tell you not every game can make it for me some of these these uh, categories were heart-wrenching because uh, a game i liked didn't make the top five but that's just the way it is doesn't mean the game was bad we just can't say everything's great got any thoughts here z no i think that about covers it you know um at the end of the day this list should be whoever ends up winning or losing a look at the year as a whole and a pretty solid collection of games. So if this is something that is for you just a jumping on point, you're not going to go too wrong picking pretty much any of these. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm excited to see which one wins. You know, you're, you're never quite sure. But honestly, my goal with this was never about the winners. It was to create a list of nominations that were worth talking about. When you look at these nominations, right. you could say those are five solid games in that category. We added one new category this year, solo games, uh, which is a, a category for people who want to have the solo gaming experience. So we'll get to that in a bit. But other than that, 
we're just going to jump right in and go in the categories. And we're going to show you all the information. We're not going to read all the names of the uh, designers and stuff, but all that information is there. And if you want to learn more about these games, we'll have all this up on our website so you can click through and find out more about the games. So three is family games, uh, gateway games, the games for people playing together as a family or a group of casual, lighter games. And here are the nominees for that. First of all, we have Horrified. Uh, that cooperative game where you're trying to stop the Universal Studio monsters. We have Parks, a game about the national parks all over. Uh, Point Salad, this little card game, which is the mechanism of the game, Point Salad, but also collecting the different cards is the point of the game, Salad. Tiny Towns, a uh, game in which, a you know, bingo-esque game almost, as you're trying to put out the different buildings in your town to score the most points. And Wingspan, uh, about birds and collecting birds and building an engine to get the most points at the end of the game. Those are our five nominees for Best Family Game. All right. That's good stuff. And I am going to talk about the nominees for artwork. And this, again, of course, is all about the art in the game. We're not talking about the quality of the game mechanisms themselves. We are looking at the artwork here, the quality, the uh, the distinctness, uh, the... Uh, the look of a game. And here are the nominees. We're looking at Atlantis Rising 2nd Edition about saving Atlantis and its people from sinking into the ocean. Uh, once again, Parks about the U.S. National Parks. pret a Porte about the fashion industry and creating fashion. Unmatched, a dueling game uh, which brings together all sorts of uh, real and literary figures. And once again, Wingspan, that bird watching game that you've probably heard about. Those are the nominees for Best Art. All right, for most innovative games. Now, innovative, of course, could be anything. We're looking at a new mechanism or new way to use a mechanism, just a new way that the game comes across. And so these are our nominations for the five most innovative games of last year. First of all, we have Detective City of Angels, where multiple players are working, trying to figure out a case back in the hard-boiled detective era. We have Mystery House, Adventures in a Box, where you look through the sides of the box, trying to figure out what's going on. An escape room style game where looking into the box will solve the mystery. QE is a game in which you can bid pretty much any amount you want because you're printing money, an auction game that allows you to do whatever you want almost. <laughs> Slide Quest, a game in which players are uh, all on four sides of the board, manipulating the board together to make stuff slide or, or avoid falling in the holes and to accomplish a quest. And then you boot the board game, which takes the somewhere between video game and board game as you cooperatively are taking a submarine around and trying to accomplish missions together. Those are our five nominees for Most Innovative Game. All right, let's take a look at the nominees for the best reprint of the year. And we're starting with a repeat for me, Atlantising Second Edition, uh, which brings back Atlantis Rising with uh, many new things. New artwork, uh, some new mechanisms, quite the reworking there. A reprint of Dune, which has been uh, out of print for decades now, and of course uses the the uh, literary work as its foundation. Pax Pamir, second edition, in which the players are going to represent 19th century Afghan leaders. Uh, Preta Porte, uh, again, a, um, a fashion board game being brought back from the same uh, publisher. And Unmatched, which is going, which is a, a dueling game, and it is a reworking, a re-implementation of Star Wars epic duels with, of course, a brand new uh, theme and some reworked mechanisms. So those are the nominees for the best reprint of the year. All right, let's talk about strategy games. Uh, these are games which are very strategic. <laughs> so here are the five nominees for best strategy game. We have. City of the Big Shoulders, a fairly heavy economic style game. Then we have Coloma. This is a game that, yes, it has magnets in the middle, but you are placing workers trying to uh, accomplish different goals in the Old West. Maracaibo, 
in which you are going around the Caribbean and uh, moving your ship along, taking various actions, using cards in front of you in a tableau. Paladins of the West Kingdom, the second in this trilogy, as you place your different workers down, the workers are different colors, which will affect where and when you can place them. And Watergate, a two-player game about the Watergate scandal in American history, a back-and-forth uh, card game in which the cards can be used in various ways. Those are our five nominees for Strategy Game. All right, let's take a look at the nominees for the best production of the year. This, of course, takes into account how well a game is made. It's a look at the quality of those components and not necessarily the gameplay itself, just uh, the production and how that informs the package overall. And we are taking a look at Batman, uh, Batman Gotham City Chronicles, uh, which is, of course, about the well-known comic book uh, hero, anti-hero, some people might say. Cloud Spire, which is a, a tower defense MOBA-style game. Uh, Funkoverse strategy game, one that combines many themes together and uh, brings them uh, to battle uh, in a chibi style, of course, uh, little plastic characters. Nemesis, which is a sci-fi horror and survival style game. And large, uh, and lastly here, Tapestry, a civilization style game in which you must advance your control and dominion over the world you are inhabiting. That is the list of the nominees for the best production of the year. I do like myself a good production. All right, let's jump to expansions. Absolutely. You like the game? You want more? Here are the top five expansions of last year. First of all, we have Seven Wonders Armada, where you're adding ships. And actually, this is one of the more ambitious expansions to Seven Wonders to come out, adding another whole section to mm -hmm. the game. Quacks of Quedlingburg, the Herb Witches. This adds more variety to the game. And then add some witches, which give you coins that you can use in various ways to do special abilities over the game. Space Base, the emergence of Shy Pluto, a little bit of a campaign uh, to the original game, and then just more mechanisms as you have fighters that you can use and other new ways to use the cards. Underwater Cities, new discoveries. Not only did that up the production level from the first one, but added more extra stuff for this strategic game. And Terraforming Mars Turmoil, which added almost a United Nations or a political council ruling Mars, and you are trying to affect that, which will affect policies that will determine some of the rules of the game. And those are our five expansion nominees for last year. All right, let's take a look at small publisher. This is an interesting category. Uh, a small publisher, of course, being one that has only a certain number of publications so far, right, Tom? Five, five or less as of the time that these were printed. So they may have actually gone over five over the course of 2019, but when these were printed, they had right. five or less games. Exactly. So, uh, you know, fairly new publishers, basically and small. They've just come on to the uh, playing field, so to speak. And here are the nominees. We've got Cartographers, a role player tale. This is a, uh, a roll and write style game in the uh, popular role player setting. We have Coloma, which is, as Tom said, a game set in during the Gold Rush. We have Parks, again, about the national parks, visiting them, uh, collecting postcards and memories from those places. We have Res Arcana, a magic game uh, about uh, getting your engine to work together with very few moving parts and try, uh, you know, pulling out triumph over your opponents when uh, you have very little at your disposal. And lastly, QE, that wacky game about bidding whatever you want to and getting your opponents to give up more money than you do. Those are the nominees for Small Publisher. All right, let's take a look at the nominees for the cooperative game. We're all working together, trying to win. And here we go. As we mentioned before, we have Horrified. Uh, again, stop those universal monsters, take down Dracula. Letter Jam, a game, a cooperative party game in which players are all trying to help each other figure out the words in front of them. 
Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth, a game that managed to merge uh, a follow up Manches of Madness, merging an online presence with the Lord of the Rings universe. Marvel Champions, the card game, a living card game from Fantasy Flight Games in which you were picking different Marvel heroes and fighting together against various villains. And Quirky Circuits, a game in which you are programming together a single robot moving around the board, but without much communication. And those are the five nominees for Best Co-op Game. All right, let's take a look at the nominees for two-player games. Now, I do want to mention these are games that are particularly good at a two-player count, but they are not necessarily exclusively for two players, though many of the uh, your nominees here indeed are exclusively for two players. Let's take a look. So we've got Funkoverse Strategy Game, uh, which again could have you pitting Batman against uh, old Voldemort uh, in all sorts of strange combinations. We've got Skulk Hollow, which is going to have, it's an asymmetric two-player game in which you are going to be pitting a clan of foxes, fox characters against some gigantic behemoth. We've got Undaunted Normandy, a deck-building style game about, of course, uh, uh, D-Day and the war. Got Unmatched, about, like we said, uh, bringing together different figures. Uh, you know, you can have Bruce Lee going up against, uh, I guess, pretty soon a, a raptor from uh, Jurassic Park. That's what that's about. And Watergate, about the famous uh, U.S. scandal, of course. Those are the nominees for two player games. All right, our next category is New Designer. These are for designers, their first or second published game. And we think these games are excellent. One of my favorites. Want, want to call my attention to these folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so first we have Cartographers, a role player tale. Set in a role player universe, this is a roll and write or flip and write game as you flip cards and draw out a little map. Parks. Uh, which we've seen several times already here about the national parks all over America. Point Salad, uh, again, a nice little filler as you collect vegetables and or ways to score them. Tiny Towns, that bingo-esque game as you slowly fill up your area and try to put the buildings in the best way and score them points. And then Wingspan, that colossal hit about birds and everything about birds, including their wingspan and eggs. Those are our nominees for Best New Designer. All right, let's take a look at party games and the party game nominees. We've got here a Letter Jam, uh, which, as Tom mentioned, is a cooperative game about trying to decipher what is in front of everyone without actually seeing what's in front of yourself. We've got Medium, a game in which you're trying to mind meld with the other players and simultaneously speak the same thing. Team 3 about building some structure uh, without actually being able to see that and being told what you must do. So sort of, you know, passing down the information. Slide Quest is a dexterity game in which the players must work together uh, to manipulate a tilt table, basically, and have precisely what they want to happen actually happen. And lastly, Wavelength, uh, in which you must... Uh, try to get information across to other players about where on a sliding scale something falls uh, with an, you know, a fairly uh, abstract clue as to where that is. Those are the nominees, the very interesting nominees for the party game of the year. All right. So now we're going to talk about best theming. Now, theming could be a variety of mm. things. It could be a new theme or a theme that we don't see used very often, or it could just be a theme that's really well you know, put into the game uh, a theme where you're like, when you play it, you're like, wow, this theme works well. So it could be one of those two things. And here are our nominees for best theming. Once again, Horrified, with it's taking the universal monsters, the slightly less scary monsters, and having players work <laughs> together to stop them. Lord of the Rings, Journeys in Middle Earth, where you get to see stuff that happened before or during the actual book uh, as you jump in there and help your heroes fight together. Star Wars Outer Rim, where you can be uh, a bounty hunter or just delivering a smuggler, you know, taking stuff all over Star Wars and seeing many of your favorite characters. Watergate, which once again takes us back to that <laughs> scandal in American history. And Wingspan, which showed that Birds was not a boring theme and instead all kinds of facts. Every card in this game is a different bird. And those are our top five games 
for best theming. All right, let's take a look at our new category here, folks. This is best solo game of the year. And again, much like the two-player nominations, these are not necessarily games that only play solitaire, but games that have a particularly robust solitaire mode are perfectly uh, fine as well. So let's take a look at the nominees here. We begin with Cthulhu Death May Die, in which, uh, again, the player, thinking here about a solitaire-only uh, spin, the player must maintain their sanity as they battle Cthulhu and stop some ritual to bring a beastie forth. The Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth, uh, that app-assisted game in which you go on adventures and try to fulfill your destiny. Marvel Champions, the card game. Take up your favorite superhero and beat down the villains. Tainted Grail, the fall of Avalon, which is sort of a uh, grim, dark twist on Arthurian legends. And again, Wingspan, which you can, by yourself, do a little bird watching, try to get the most victory points. Those are the nominees for the best solo game of 2019. All righty. And then finally, we have Game of the Year. This is the only category where there's 10 nominees. And this is simply our favorite games of the year. You know, so this could right. be anything from any of the categories thrown in here. And in fact, there's a few games that didn't show up in any of those categories. But these are the 10 nominees. First, we have Clank Legacy Acquisitions Incorporated, taking the very popular game Clank adding in the theming from the Acquisitions Incorporated online shows and legacy game, putting all that together in a package that worked. Detective City of Angels, once again, this hard, gritty, hard-boiled detective story, but it also allowed one player to play against a bunch of detectives and tried to stop them from figuring out the case. Imperial Settlers, Empires of the North, this sequel of sorts, Imperial Settlers, which actually turned out to be a fairly different game in which each player picks a different group of people and tries to settle and expand their empire in a little tableau building, engine building game. Horrified, which I'm running out of things to say about the universal monsters and you stopping them, but you know it. And Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth. Again, you take Legolas and Gimli and other famous characters and run them through your own adventure, which morphs and changes based on decisions that you make. Maracaibo, a very strategic game from Alexander Pfister in which you're moving around the Caribbean, using cards in various ways, trying to figure out the best combination to score points. Paladins of the West Kingdom. Uh, again, the second one in this trilogy of games in the West Kingdom, um, a meaty game where you're collecting workers and then spending them trying to figure out which of the various ways to get points will help you win. Tainted Grail, the Fall of Avalon, as you take this story, is this group of secondary heroes who have to go figure out what happened to the first group of heroes in this very dark but very immersive storytelling game. Watergate, the two-player game, which takes the card play of bigger games like Twilight Struggle and condenses it down into a small but very meaty two-player game. And Wingspan, the game about birds and everything about them, but also a solid engine-building style game in which every game is going to feel different based on the sheer number of birds in the game. Pretty Ten pretty good games. All ten of these games. In fact, pretty much every game on this list is in the Dice Tower library. Um, so... Mm -hmm. You know, because we think they're that good. If you missed anything we said here, all of this can be found by going to DicetowerAwards.com. You can see the list of the nominees there. We'll be spending the next couple months voting on these, playing them and voting on them. And as I said, in early July, we will announce the winners. Congratulations, honestly, to me. Just being nominated for this list is a big deal. And these are games that we recommend that you all check out. And that's it, really. Thanks, guys, so much for watching. Yeah. Um, we'll see you next time. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I am Z Garcia. Thanks, everybody. This has been the Dice Tower Awards. <laughs>